Let's talk about hollowing out our plates. I have the plates right here, front uh, and the back of the front, or back of the top. Um, and each of these little zones you saw me draw is a different thickness area that's required for the sound of the instrument. Now this is just a starting point. I'll get all this meat out and then I can fine tune it based off of the sound of the plate and a few other things. But to start with, I need to get some specific thicknesses. So this starts at 2.4, three millimeters, uh, 2.6, etc. And the back, now that the inlay is done in here, which I'm super excited about, um, and I'll show you all in a little bit, uh, is I have to hollow this out. So 2.5, 2.6, etc. So I'm going to use a very simple method that you'll see me do where I'll pinch something between the drill press bit and a, and a platen. And then that can give me the thickness that I need, and I'm just going to hog out the material with a drill bit and then shave it down till all my little drill bit marks are gone. It'll make sense when you see it. Some people do this with a little screw press. Some people do it with a really fine drill bit. Some people don't do this at all. They just measure it as they go. Um, so my mentor, Tommy Case, used to use a little drill bit here and there um, and then carve it out until you hit the bottom of those little drill bits. And then I realized, well, if I'm just doing a bunch of little drill bits, he has a whole cool setup that I don't have. So I'm going to use a bigger drill bit and just hog it out and just chisel the rest out. So uh, let me get to work on that. I'll show you what it looks like. So now I'm going to do this in all the zones and start hollowing it out. Alright, I'm downstairs in the shop. It's cold, so there's a heater that's about to turn on above me, so if it makes some noise, I apologize. Uh, I'm down here to make a mess because I'm going to start hollowing out the plates. Um, I have the back plate. You can see all those drill holes, right? We finished our inlay on the front, which I think looks really, really good. I'm excited about that. Uh, there goes the heater. And um, so I have my top ready to go as well. So each of these zones that you kind of saw me draw have different kind of purposes, in some people's opinion, um, of what the frequency is that they actually vibrate at, what the thinness of the plate is to uh, allow the plate to function and move. Um, but the arching has a lot to do with the sound and the shapes that it creates inside. So I have all my arching done to what I'm satisfied with. So now I have to match the inside with the outside. But it's not the same in each area. And that's something I learned um, when I first did my apprenticeship. I thought a violin was the same all the way through. Um, I never really thought about it too much. But it is. It's different thicknesses in different areas for structural integrity or for optimal sound quality. Now, the way I measure this is uh, I drill all these holes, obviously, for certain thicknesses. I'm going to grind all that meat out. I could take a chisel and chisel it out. Um, or there's lots of other ways to get it out. But I'm just going to grind out the majority of that meat, and then I will scrape and plane down to my final dimension. Now, how do I measure my final dimension? Um, a lot of people will use a hand version of this. Uh, you can measure on the area here, and you can see. I can see how thick it is in different places. Um, and this is great. This is what a lot of people use. Um, the setup that I've kind of developed for myself is right here. Uh, I have the same thing, just a dial gauge and it's set onto a little anvil basically, a little wooden anvil you'd say. And so I can lift that pin and slide this around and see exactly how thick or thin anywhere it is. And I don't have to use my other hand, um, which is handy. So these thicknesses, they get really thin. Uh, the thinnest part of the plate is about two and a half millimeters. Um, so maybe a little thinner in a couple places. But, uh, but yeah, so we'll get to that. I'm going to go ahead and grind this out. And I won't film a lot of this because it's really dusty. Uh, and it's just loud. You're just going to watch me grind on stuff. So I'm going to get back to where you can see me scraping it. And, uh, and I'll show you what they look like in a little while. All right. So I've been grinding away at this for a while. And you can see I just have 
the little dots left, right? The tip of that drill bit. So that's the meat off of that one. The same is done with the back. So I have those little dots. And so once I get to those little dots, I'll start taking measurements and scraping. Um, and I'll show you guys what that looks like in a little bit. But I got a little more sanding to do um, before I start actually scraping uh, these plates. But they're already starting to sound good. Yeah. So this is the back and uh, top. Yeah. There you go. Anyhow, um, so I'll get to work a little more on these and then I'll check back in in a little bit. This one's already starting to get flexible, which is nice. All right, let's talk about our next step here. It's gonna be an interesting one. I have to make a fingerboard uh, for this violin. Now the fingerboards are actually more complex than they look. They are not just straight and flat. Um, they will have an arch to them on the underside, right? They also have an arch to them on the top side that tapers. And the arch right here is actually hollow, a different amount on each side um, that kind of spans the strings. So the lower string, the G string, has to vibrate more, right? It's larger than the E string over here. And so on one side, you actually have to have a little more taken off than the other side. So anyhow, we'll get into the complexities of it later, but I need to recreate or make a fingerboard and I need to make a tail piece. These are the traditional pieces you would see on the bottom side of the violin that holds the strings. So I need to make one of these and one of these. And I'm gonna make it out of this iron bark. Now this piece of wood has a long history and a lot of uh, interesting story behind it, but because of its scale right now, it's very dense. I mean, it's just like an ebony. Uh, you can see I'll have a shot to make one fingerboard out of this board and the tail piece right there. All right, so if I mess up one, I'm kind of out of luck. So I'm gonna take my time, but the first step is I'm gonna rough this out on a bandsaw uh, for the basic shape. And then I have a jig here that sits in my vise that can actually stick the fingerboard in to plane the fingerboard to get it level and flat. Um, so I'll be using this as a way of holding the material once I get the taper cut on it. All right, so I have my blank cut out from the bandsaw. Uh, the next thing I need to do is I actually need to fit it to the right length before I start shaping it. Um, and so to, to achieve that for me, I'm gonna trim down my sides until it's the right you know, width, because I have a little bit of gaps up here, so that's just extra material I need to get rid of. Um, so I'm gonna trim that up. So I thought I'd show you guys, um, I'm gonna have to hand plane uh, this stuff off. Let's put it here. Um, so I'm using number five, but for those that don't work with hand planes often, this is the kind of the breakdown of a hand plane. You have an iron, you have what's called a cap iron or a chip breaker, and this piece is going to fit on top of that, uh, and that will go in your actual plane here. But I just sharpened this up fresh, and I'll show you how I tell if it's sharp. Um, I'm always missing patches of hair here on my arm, so this is super sharp. <laughs> um, so anyways, this will all go together, um, like so. And I'm leaving a very small amount of the iron exposed. Okay, for the chip breaker there. So this will now sit down in my plane on top of what's called a frog. This frog can change the mouth availability. It can move forwards and backwards um, to tighten up the mouth or to release it. I have a little lever here to move it side to side to adjust the angle. And then my lever cap there will hold it all together. Nice and tight. So I can adjust this iron. I'm sighting down the end of it to reveal the actual iron sticking out. So I can make sure it's level and square in the middle. And now I can take my first passes here. I have this set up with the grain running this way so I can push not into my vise over there. Um, and that'll take the first pass. And I'll get this totally smooth 
on both sides until it's the right thickness or width, and then we can start shaping it. Now I've never worked with iron bark before, but this wood is a joy to work with. It's a little bit like Ipe or ebony. It's got a super, super dense grain structure. So it's gonna be perfect for a fingerboard. So these fingerboards, uh, what they actually are is they are tapered in a couple different directions. They're obviously tapered this way for the sides, but they're also tapered from end to end. So this is about 11 millimeters. This is about six and a half to seven, depending on what you get. Uh, and so I'm gonna taper it first from the 11 down to seven over the distance of here, just the hand plane. And then I can start actually arching it so that the arch, when I make it, will follow the taper. So uh, I'll be here for a little while. I'm just gonna hand plane this down and then uh, get to rounding it over. So if the middle starts getting high, I can take this plane that's long and skew it to shorten the bed length of the plane and take a shearing cut right in the middle. So it's not super long and aggressive, just to make sure I'm staying flat. And I'm looking under the plane, All right? see if I can get it from your perspective, to see the light under there. So we're almost there. Just a smidgen away. Maybe even enough to scrape it. Nope, a little more. A little more to go. All right, so now I have my taper at the right measurements, and I can start arching it. And all I'm gonna do to arch it is take a series of planes on the corners and slowly make facets all the way around. I'll catch up with you when there's something to show. All right, this is hard to get on camera, but I'll let you see if you can see it. So here is a pre-made ebony fingerboard, right? Um, here is now the iron bark one. It's hard to see the contrast of it. It has, you can see there, the profile. I've got it all curved over and curved over. I'm doing the final touch-ups on these transitions. And what I'm using is the cabinet scraper we've talked about before, but just a sharp one. So I'm making sure that I can hit these edges to make sure that the hand plane marks go down. And so now we'll get this all smoothed over and then I need to take a ruler or a straight edge of any kind here and I'll put it toe to heel and make sure I have the appropriate gap, the curve that's inside of that fingerboard. It's very subtle, but it's very important. Um, when someone starts playing an instrument this way, oh, I got the neck right here. 
Haven't thought about seeing this together yet. Woo wee. Yeah. So that's what we're looking at. That's gonna be the color on there. Oh, it's gonna be so pretty. Anyhow, um, when someone is playing this instrument, uh, if you have a dome on here, when you go to push the string down, it will actually come in contact down here somewhere. It'll start buzzing, it won't be correct. So when you, f when you put your finger down on the string for in the correct intonation, that curve helps it ring out correctly. So I wanna make sure I have that in there right. Um, I'm glad I put this on here. It looks like it could be, I could make it a little thinner in the width. Yeah. Let's see what that one is. Yeah, okay. So I'll probably thin down the size just a hair um, before I put it on there so I can make sure it blends in well. But man, I'm digging that color. I think that's gonna look good. It'll be interesting. Okay, cool. Well, let me get back at it. All I'm gonna be sitting here doing is doing some fine tuning with the scraper card um, just for my hands to feel and then just like I said, um, to see it uh, with a ruler underneath it to see the light. So I'll put on some music and just sit here and make lots of staticky shavings that stick to everything. Man, this is exciting. Mm -hmm.